Two influential U.S. editors have urged the FDA to require physician groups and doctors to disclose their financial ties with drug makers. These are a few predictions made circa 1880s to the 1900s. Quote, let the diet reform be progressive. Let the people be taught how to prepare food without the use of milk or butter. Tell them that the time will soon come when there will be no safety in using eggs, milk, cream, or butter because disease in animals is increasing in proportion to the increase of wickedness among men. The time is near when, because of the iniquity of the fallen race, the whole animal creation will groan under the disease that curse our earth. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 135. Another quote. There is no safety in the eating of the disease flesh of dead animals, and in a short time the milk of the cows will also be excluded from the d diet of Yahuwah's commandment keeping people. In a short time it will not be safe to use anything that comes from animal creation. And this was written in 1898, Pacific Union Recorder. It was uh, dated in an article November the 7th, 1901. What you are about to see is beyond your worst nightmares. But for animals raised on modern intensive production farms and killed in slaughterhouses, it is cold, inescapable reality. Once you see for yourself the routine cruelty involved in raising animals for food, you'll understand why millions of compassionate people have decided to leave meat off their plates for good. Chickens are probably the most abused animals on the face of the planet. They are crammed into filthy sheds by the tens of thousands, immersed in their own excrement among the corpses of other birds who died of heart attacks or stress. Some even die of starvation brought on by becoming crippled from growing so large, so fast, that their legs can't withstand the weight, which makes them unable to reach food. After being genetically manipulated and fed antibiotics to promote unnaturally rapid growth, their hearts, lungs, and legs often break down under the added weight. Heart attacks and crippling leg deformities are far too common. A PETA investigation found this farmer killing sick and injured turkeys by beating them with a metal rod and then tossing them aside, leaving them still conscious and suffering. This was deemed legal and standard by the industry. These turkeys were left to languish for six hours before being loaded back onto another truck to be taken, injured, to the slaughterhouse another four hours from the scene of this accident. This undercover video shows the standard method of gathering chickens for slaughter. After enduring weeks in filthy, crowded conditions, the animals are loaded onto trucks and taken through extreme weather conditions without food or water to slaughterhouses. Where they are snapped into shackles by their fragile legs and have their throats slit, often while still conscious. Talking about the, the mixing of human genes with uh, food and vegetables, I don't really think it's the first time they've done it with uh, the, the veggies and so on, and probably the rice as well, or even with the fish that get churned out now in these farms, because I, I watched a program years ago where the, the Canadian government had, had funded a project and uh, they were introducing new DNA into fish and it's so simple to do they just held the fish up coming down a trough one at a time very quick a few seconds each uh, and just touched them it was the end of a pen thing uh, which injected into it um, some DNA at attached with E. coli E. coli takes it deep inside and once the, the just like you as your cells die off and they're replaced this new DNA replaces the ones that die off and, and eventually the fish becomes a complete different you know it's, it's a, and it's owned of course the guys own the patent the DNA so that kind of puts you off their, their farmed 
farm fish. In a way, it's the same thing with your with your uh, all your crops. Now you don't bring big biotech companies into into making your food um, that worked and have a tradition of being part of the big military industrial complex like Monsanto. Um, you don't bring in thousands of scientists that are generally making things to kill you into making things because they like you, like food, for instance, which is awfully essential to living. If you haven't thought about it much, you should do some thinking about that. But it's, it says it's first GM food crop containing human genes set to be approved for commercial production. The laboratory created rice produces some of the human proteins found in breast milk and saliva. Well, th- that's awfully appetizing, isn't it? It says, it's U.S. developers say they could be used. To, they always do this. It's like, what we give you a brain chips? So we'll, we're, we're trying to help quadriplegics, like the DARPA said years, a couple of years ago. I mean, that's what DARPA's there for. The big military boys are there to help paraplegics. No, I don't think so. But they always use that rubbish. So it could, it could be used. It could be used to treat anything, but used to treat children with diarrhea, a major killer in the third world. So if they survive, they'll be salivating as though they're on antipsychotic medication, I guess, and, and growing breasts. It says the rest is a, the rice is a major step in so-called Frankenstein foods, the first mingling of human origin genes and those from plants. But the U.S. Department of Agriculture has already signaled it plans to allow commercial cultivation. So, in other words, the boys who've, uh, who who uh, put, are put in there by Monsanto because they own the FDA and everything, as they're boys who all they all work for Monsanto. They'll do a few years in the U.S. departments, then they go back to Monsanto. Anyway, so it's, it's a, a done deal. The rice producers, California-based Ventria Bioscience, have been given preliminary approval to grow it on more than 3,000 acres in Kansas. The company plans to harvest the proteins and use them in drinks, desserts, yogurts, and muesli bars. It says it's provoked horror among some GM critics and consumer groups on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, Gene Watch UK which monitors new GM foods, described it as very disturbing, and researcher Becky Price warned there are huge, huge health risks and people should rightly be concerned about this. But this is the agenda, folks. I see Russell talked about this kind of stuff back in the 1930s and 40s. And, uh, and what's amazing, too, is you can put artists like this out, and then they say, Friends of the Earth campaigner Claire Oxborough said, Using food crops in fields as glorified drug factories is a very worrying development. Friends of the Earth are, are the most radical group for massive depopulation. But they get them snuck in this article here just to give you a different opinion. And uh, another article on it, too. I'll, I'll put this up tonight as well. Uh, it says uh, it goes into the same story, basically. And gives a little bit more detail about it. And it talks about the first biotech crops commercialized in '96. Biotech crops are now being grown in 18 countries. That's why you've all got ulcers and, and cancers of the colon, just like all the animals that tested this stuff on first got. Uh, if, you, if you didn't understand why cancers are skyrocketing, uh, maybe you'll put two and two together, uh, hopefully. Uh, it says, today the United States is a leader in producing biotech crops with $27.5 billion in value in 2003 to 4 from growing biotech-enhanced soybeans, corn, cotton, canola, and a lot of other stuff now. A lot of other stuff. There are all the other kinds of vegetables as well. So unless you grow your own, really, or you know someone who does grow your, their own, you, you, it's, it's not good news. And corn and everything, it's just on and on and on it goes. If you want to conquer the world, you just follow, as I say, the agenda prescribed by Bertrand Russell and the big boys uh, and the Huxleys who talked about, especially Julian Huxley, about massive depopulation, etc. People who are given a, a completely different education and a different reality altogether than, than any of you would ever suspect. And they, they, they're part of a superclass, of course, very old superclass in the family. Has there been a fulfillment of this prediction? Due to the increase of the love of money in today's society, beef herders realized in the 1980s that feeding ground up cows back to cows by mixing them into their own feed would make their profits double in some areas. This however caused what we call today mad cow disease simple reality is cows were not created to eat cows thanks to this practice much of the beef in the world is simply unsafe to eat for the simple fact that this disease can and does spread to human populations by consumption worse yet 
Even the milk of the infected cows has become unsafe. As any doctor will tell you, poisons in the bloodstream always passes into the milk of the animal. This is why doctors will not give certain medications to mothers that are breastfeeding. They know what's in the blood eventually comes into the milk. Therefore, the milk, ice cream, butter, and yes, even cheese products can now contain mad cow infections in them as well. Of course, the disease won't be as concentrated in the milk, cheese, and butter as, as in the uh, beef. However, this infection is there. So why play Russian roulette? And for those of you that are wondering about ice cream, ice cream is worse because it takes 10 gallons of milk to make only one gallon of ice cream. To make these unnerving truths so certain, it turns out that chicken farmers have been feeding their chickens antibiotics, hormones, and arsenic, as well as keeping their light on the chicken loops 24-7 to generate unnatural feeding habits of the bird so as to make them grow larger for more profits when they go for sale. These gluttonous birds now become unsafe to eat. Lack of sleep also causes the birds to become sickly in many different ways. Again, it's all about the money. Still, it's even worse here in the United States of America where it's perfectly legal to mix into the chicken feed cooked down cows to make the birds even fatter, as well as their eggs later for sale.